浅野山は外出が禁止されている期間に接待を伴う飲食店に複数回出入りしていたなどとして During the pandemic, the Japan Sumo Association handed down suspensions to three of its top stars. Maegashira wrestler Abby ranked fifth. Yudin ranked Megashira 10, and Asa no Yama, who held the highly regarded title of Ozeki. All three wrestlers were caught breaking COVID protocols when Japan was in a lockdown. The harshest punishment, a six tournament ban, was given to Ozeki Asa no Yama, one of the biggest blows to Sumu's top ranks since the Mongolian Yokozuna scandals. Just missing one tournament can devastate a Sumu wrestler's career, because Sumu is a long game. The consequence of sitting out tournaments in sumo isn't just missing a shot for the tournament championship. If you can read Japanese, you'll be able to read the name of every person who is a professional sumo wrestler in Japan and what rank they have in this one piece of paper. The ranking basically dictates every aspect of a sumo wrestler's life, from the money he receives to living arrangements. To even the clothes he can wear. In every tournament, a sumo wrestler aims to do two things win their division championship, and if that doesn't happen, at least get majority wins in the 15 day tournament, incur majority losses, or pull out entirely for matches, and the wrestler automatically gets demoted to a lower rank. Abby, Ryuden, and Asanoyama all started out here. The top division, and because of their tournament suspensions, they progressively fell down the divisions. Abby, at the end of his suspension, ended up in Makushita 56, somewhere around here. That's a loss of 114 ranks and a relegation of three divisions, while Yudin ranked Makushita 47 after being suspended for three tournaments. Unsurprisingly, when the suspension ended for Abby and Ryudin, they easily overpowered their opponents in the low divisions, even winning the division championships along the way. But with Abby reaching the top division again, becoming tournament runner up twice in a row, and reaching his highest rank yet, it's beginning to appear that the three tournament suspension for Abby was more of a gift than a punishment. People don't understand, we go on tour. We, not, we don't have a season off season. It's like my fingers are all broken and my shoulders are all screwed up. My boat knees are bad. You know, and you, your body takes a toll, but that's where it separates the men and the boys because the guys who can handle it and fight through the pain and just go through it, it's, it's, it's the real warriors of sumo because not everybody can make it. 80%, 90% ain't going to make it. Out of the 42 active wrestlers in the top division of sumo, Half of them had sustained at least one serious injury in their professional career. 14 out of the 24 sumo wrestlers have suffered a ligament tear to their knees. A wrestler, no matter what injuries he has sustained in the last tournament, must compete in the next one eight weeks later, else they risk falling from their rank. What's even crazier is that in sumo, it's more than common and even a norm to compete in the tournament with an active injury. They don't want to lose their rank. It means money, especially if you're at the bottom of duty, or you don't want to go back into that abyss where you start earning nothing. I busted my knee, I busted my fingers, you know, I see guys broken their noses. It's an instant contact, and anything can happen, you know. so. I saw guys who get knocked out right at the first hit because they come so low. Your opponent comes so low that they hit you in their foreheads and hit you in a jar and you actually knock、yeah. out. You know, you know, and, and those injuries, you can actually break a leg because when you get knocked out, your body just releases and everything just bends. You know? So, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you always got to be aware 24 7. Once you get up there, it's either. It's either you and him. There's no, there's, there's no ifs and buts about it. And I want to I be the guy who killed the guy. If you look into the sumo wrestlers' tournament records at the time they got injured, it does seem like there is a culture of disregard for proper injury care in the sport. 
Ozaki Takakesho, who holds Sumo's second highest rank, tore the ligament on his right knee on day 5 in a tournament in May 2019. He returned to the competition just three days later, which expectedly only did further damage to his knee. His coach ultimately announced that his injury became too serious that the wrestler had to withdraw for the next tournament in July. If the doctor has uh, advised for uh, ligament uh, injury treatment without surgery, then it would usually take about uh, at least a minimum of six weeks uh, for the healing to occur. This is mostly in terms of uh, the medial collateral ligament injuries which are usually treated without surgery. So for uh, injuries such as these, which are uh, non-operatively managed, it would take about uh, six weeks to three months for the ligaments to heal. For post-op scenario wherein such as an ACL injury or a medial collateral ligament injury, uh, which we operate, it would take probably about six weeks to three months. Uh, for the healing to start and to progress considerably. For an anterior cruciate ligament or an ACL injury, the injury uh, process would take about six weeks to three months for it to heal. Although the, the graft healing would take uh, up to about nine months to one year. That's the reason we advise uh, patients to uh, restart any sporting activities only after about nine months to one year because the full time uh, to healing for the graft in the tunnel would take pro probably approximate up to a year. None other than the top wrestlers of sumo, those who hold the rank of Yokozuna could be a better poster child for miraculous comebacks. Tarunifuji, Fuji, the only active Yokozuna of sumo today, sat out for four tournaments to heal a meniscus tear to his knee. He fell all the way down almost to the bottom division of sumo, only to climb his way back up to the top, finally reaching the rank of Yokozuna that some say he wouldn't have had if not for his injury. When I was researching about who had injuries in the top division of sumo, I was shocked to see how most of these wrestlers come back just days after their injuries. Takanosho with an ACL injury came back after five days. Meise injured his upper left arm days before the tournament and still competed, only to withdraw again because obviously his injury hasn't fully healed yet. Endo ruptured his anterior cruciate ligaments in his knee that damaged the lateral meniscus in March 2015. And he opted out of surgery because he knew that if he did, he would have to sit out the tournament in May. This is a story you see all throughout the top division. This can be and probably might be career ending injuries. But you see these sumo wrestlers coming back after days to compete again. That's just insanity. Sumo's been going a long time, but they kind of stand there looking clueless every time something happens. So they've realized that they've had to actually do something. It's pretty much common to see sports change and adapt when they prove something is indeed harmful. Studies can be conducted more accurately, thus the sport should evolve to become safer over time. So for a thousand-year-old sport like sumo, surely it's been moving towards a safer environment. They have made a few changes where they wrote in a clause in the case of an injury such as a head collision during the touchy eye, which is the, the initial charge, a referee can declare an injured rickshi unfit to wrestle and pull him out of the bout. And it results in a, a default loss, which is a fusensho. So people might remember, I think it was day two with Enho versus Takagenji in July. 2021 he was smashing the hell out of him a few uppercuts and things like that and he was deemed unfit to continue uh, Enho um, thought there was a bit of miscommunication but it was quite clear that he wasn't with it he even tripped heading back up to the dojo to bow so it was good to see them actually doing something about it I'm not a doctor or a sumo expert I just like watching it and it's above my pay grade to be suggesting what the Japan Sumo Association should do so that the health of the wrestlers could be at the forefront of sumo. But what I can say is that because of the current attitude of sumo towards injuries, the sport is not performing at 100%. Because most of these wrestlers are nursing injuries because they weren't given enough time to heal or be taken care of. I mean... 
if you want to heal a ligament tear in six to eight weeks. That just seems quite impossible. For me, think about it as like a racing car. You might have the fastest racing car, but the tire blue or something or the engine blue. It's kind of a puts everyone else at a disadvantage if you think that, oh, this was the best car. It should have won. It should keep a position in the rankings. So same if if a rickshaw that we like gets injured uh, in a spectacular fashion then we would like that person to not be penalised by it. But all the others around that are healthy and and want to keep going, they shouldn't be disadvantaged by somebody keeping their spot on the rankings. So it is the survival of the fittest. That sounds brutal, but every time I ask this question to a friend of mine, he goes, this is sumo, mate. (laughs) It's he, He just says, yeah, nosebleeds, we don't worry about it. And if they were scared, they wouldn't get out up into the ring. Yokozuna Hakuho and now Yokozuna Terunofuji have the privilege of sitting out a tournament without having their ranks affected. But everybody else down the line has to push themselves even amidst an injury. Will it come to a point where the best way to heal is to simply get suspended? It's obviously done well for Abby and Ryuden. And when Ozeki Asanoyama comes back this July 2022, it's a near guarantee he'll come back stronger. He might even reach Yokozuna. Uh, 